Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Tuesday, September 13th, 2016. Lots to talk about. Let's just jump right into it, right into the news. First headline, company called OptiTrack with a technology called OptiTrack recently at the GDC Game Developers Conference gave a demo of what their uh, technology is capable of. And they used a, basically a 20,000 square foot showroom floor space to highlight exactly the strengths of their uh, tracking capabilities. And I'd say they were pretty impressive results. They were able to get 75 head mounted displays. So you can imagine 75 rifts or vives walking around with precision positional tracking. So what a cool feat. And the obvious first commercial application for that is going to be VR arcades. So if you're a lucky bugger in China, maybe unlucky for other reasons, but certainly for VR, you'd be pretty lucky. It's probably going to be at a VR arcade near you sometime in the near future. Anybody is watching this from China, let me know. Uh, I would love to get pictures and accounts, first-hand accounts of virtual reality arcades. Same goes for Japan. Probably where we're going to see this type of technology first. Next up, we have Qualcomm's VR820 unit. I reported this back in late July. There's some more details that they made available about their technology. And remember, there was some speculation, you know, was it going to be full six degrees positional tracking, six degrees of freedom? You know, were there any caveats to that? You know, we were given a GPU with rough ideas of the speed. Now we can comment on some of those specs. So let's start with the GPU in the unit. The GPU sits basically in between, you know, like a Samsung Note 7 GPU and a desktop GPU. That's not a bad place to be when you have an untethered, full positional tracking system. This is very cool technology. And what really kind of blew me away is just thinking of the potential. So that 20,000 square foot showroom in the first news piece this technology kind of got me thinking about natural convergence. So humor me on this one, guys, my kind of nerdy fantasy of what we, I'm confident this is coming, are going to be able to experience, okay? You've got an HMD, fast GPU, it's untethered. You know, maybe we're talking five years in the future, maybe we're talking 10, and it offers full positional tracking no matter where you walk. Well, maybe you've got a man cave like mine. Maybe you've got a spare bedroom that you've got set up. The point being, we're all limited in our own way in terms of how much space we can devote to VR, right? For room scale VR. Imagine being able to put on this future HMD. The game right now that you're really into it sees you stranded on a tropical island. It's a pretty damn small island, right? Maybe it's a couple hundred feet by a couple hundred feet. Has, you know, an aquifer source. You know, some basic stuff for survival. And it's a survival game. You put on that HMD, you go to the neighborhood park. Yeah, you're going to be nerding it up big time. You're going to look like a complete nerdy noob walking around the park. But imagine, literally, put yourself at the center of the pitch slash field, start that game, and don't stop moving. <laughs> Some of us don't want to move all the time, me included. But a game like that where it is about, you know, bigger than room scale, wouldn't that be so damn amazing? You could literally go anywhere on that island, and that park would fully be mapped your real life park space, the virtual island superimposed upon it in your HMD. That just blew my mind, the potential of that. Of course, there could be 20 people there ahead of you nerding it up and you're gonna have to kind of avoid each other, but I'm sure they're gonna think of that too and have avoidance systems or 
maybe work it in that uh, those are, you know, spirits on the island of past people. Do the Dark Souls thing, I don't know, but there's going to be a solution to that. But the thought of, in the future, being able to have almost unlimited space. If the space exists in real life, and there's a game that could fit it, yeah. Granted, you're in your man cave, it scales down, but the experience to be able to have it scale all the way up, if the space does exist, mind blown, guys. Mind blown. That would be so freaking amazing. I'd be nerding it up at least a couple days a week in the summertime, for sure, for sure. Squanch Tendo is a company that I talked about uh, five weeks ago in a news piece. They were a company that had just formed, uh, former Rick and Morty co-creator. They are about to put out their first game. First game's called Accounting, and holy crap, guys the dialogue for this check out the trailer link it's hilarious funny as hell definitely not work safe so maybe don't watch it at work check it out when you're home unless you got a real cool boss and work environment then knock yourself out but yeah there's there's cursing cussing but it's done uh, it's done well let's just say that really really strong voice acting and i've always said voice acting can make or break a game right for immersion in VR, good voice acting, holy cow, can it add to the immersion. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Their first game, Accounting, basically, in a nutshell, without spoiling anything, you're almost like an executive accounting temp. You're there to balance the books at Smith & Smithson's, so not the most original name. Nobody's there when you show up. You sit at your desk. You get a call. The employee's a little skeptical about your presence, but willing to guide you through the day's events. You put on your HMD, you're transported to some crazy woodland area where the awesome voice actor slash narrator starts his bit. Hilarity ensues, as does adventure. Damn, that sounds good. Like a lot of fun. So hopefully that's out with the next few weeks. That is one I would consider picking up for sure. Always up for uh, adult humor style games. Speaking of games, headline about uh, a game called Stifled on Upload VR. This game uses just amazing uniqueness, is all I'm going to say, technology for how it runs. And we're going to get into that. But it also uses the mic. And I've talked about voice attack pretty much at length on this channel. Voice Attack is a program, and it was one of those things that I wanted to do during my staycation and didn't. Could be set up to help you in all kinds of VR applications, not just Elite Dangerous. You could set it up to do all the housekeeping. You don't have to take off your HMD. You could be swapping, yeah, like virtual desktop, but even quicker and more seamlessly using Voice Attack. But that got me thinking when I read this article, microphones really haven't been used to good effect in games. Now, we had an Aussie viewer when I was, you know, doing my voice attack tutorial that basically said his accent wasn't being picked up. Another Aussie had no issue with it, but the fact remains accents will and do pose a problem. Maybe English isn't even your first language, right? And you have a thick accent from whatever your native tongue is. And your voice not being recognized would piss you off, right? Quite frankly, it would... It would definitely irritate the snot out of you. So I get that. That can be all localized. That can be worked on. But what this game Stifle does is it uses the microphone to just awesome original effect and the gameplay style. So in this game, you have no sight. You're surrounded by darkness, okay, from the second you put the HMD on. You're able to speak into your mic, make noises, breathe into it different ways. The sound waves from that in-game, caught by the microphone, radiate out and kind of like sonar echolocation system, you know, like a bat would use. The terrain is slowly drawn for you, but drawn in that echolocation style as line graphics. So the screenshots, check them out on the link, just amazing that, yeah, your sound draws the area around you to explore it. What gets even cooler, 
I did say it was a horror game stifled, is exactly that, the horror side to it. And this is probably be a game... Uh, well, we'll get to that. But in Stifled specifically, if you are scared, tense, nervous, breathing hard, well, there's a monster after you. And this creature, like you, has no sight. Like you, uses echolocation to find his way around. Preying, of course, on your fear, your very audible fear. So if you're doing, you know, the epics, but Jesus, that you guys have seen me do a couple of times in games, he's that much closer to you to basically have you for lunch. What a cool original concept. Just being that original, they've almost got me on day one as a day one purchase. So definitely when that comes out, I want to share that with you guys on the channel because holy hell, that sounds really cool. Lots of good game concepts and we're going to keep seeing this as we move forward. And that's what keeps me just so excited day after day about virtual reality. So that's Stifle. Check it out. Check out the video in the link as well. Now, next news article has to do with um, the broadband challenges for virtual reality. And it's not just virtual reality. We've got companies throwing around the buzzwords of the day. 4K, uh, high definition streaming of games. A lot of people live in areas where there still isn't adequate bandwidth. And some people live in areas where their bandwidth provider penalizes them. In other words, if they're seen to be downloading torrents, they may get their service throttled. A lot of people live in areas where upload speeds are pretty much crippled. Uh, and the download's fine, but the upload is crippled. Or the download is fine, but the overall bandwidth for the month in terms of gigabytes downloaded or terabytes is pitiful. And all of those things are going to be obstacles for all this 4K stuff they're talking about. Think about it. Just reinstalling half a dozen to a dozen Steam games can eat up your entire quota for a month. Now, obviously, the idea with Steam is to be smart and back up your stuff. Yes, I do that on my external array but there's always reasons or backups fail or whatever and to literally install 10 games and go through your bandwidth quota for the entire month in one afternoon that's just not cool that sucks that's the part of bandwidth that they have to fix so where I live for example they offer a package uh, ADSL companies a fiber package 150 megabit upstream, 150 downstream, but you pretty much got to live downtown because those are the only areas that have the fiber infrastructure required. It hasn't made it out to the suburbs where I live. So what do I have available? Well, I can go ADSL, I can go up to 50 megabit, that's it. Capped at six upstream. I went with a cable provider, which is Shaw where I live, and opted for which at the time was the highest speed package, 100 megabit. But my upload, as you can guess, crippled. 6 megabit. That's it. And granted, most stuff is downstream. Streaming is downstream. But there are applications for upstream, and it's so frustrating to be crippled. It's also so frustrating to have them advertise all the speed you get, but then give you 500 gig quota for the month which at that awesome speed they're giving you, you could rack up in just days. And then what do you do for the rest of the month? So that has to change. We've got all this awesome technology, all this potential for virtual reality, streaming, just in general. And we may not even be able to use it depending on who our bandwidth provider. So yeah, curious what you guys have uh, in terms of upstream, downstream. Are you in one of those areas that penalizes you, throttles you? Uh, Maybe you're in an awesome area, way better, the envy of me, right? Let me know. I'm curious uh, what, what you guys have. Next news piece has to do with a company I've talked about before as well, InstaVR, uh, about six weeks ago, talked about them. They have raised in what's called Series A investment round, which is basically you know, the first real kind of venture capital efforts that a company undertakes. 
2 million they raised. And what I liked about that is this is just one of so many I've reported on where they've raised money. Now, granted, not all of this is going to games. A lot of it is going to research and development and other areas, but some of it is going to games. And we will start reaping the benefits of those investments as we move forward. Some of that, hopefully, at the end of this year. Definitely, it'll start trickling in next year. Again, that's where I draw my hope, my optimism from, is exactly that. Seeing companies just take it serious. And we'll get into another one as well in a second. Next article, uh, NVIDIA kicked off CES 2017 with a bit of a keynote speech. And they mentioned their four pillars of growth, artificial intelligence, uh, automatic driving or like the remote driving, gaming, and their fourth, virtual reality. So really awesome to hear them have that as one of their growth pillars when they've got their VR headset instills at least some confidence in me. If I thought it was boneheaded to create the PS4 Pro with woefully inept specs, which I still do, somewhat redeem themselves with at least taking VR seriously, standing behind it. They got a lot riding on it, so of course it makes sense that they would, but we need more of these big players doing the same. Next news piece, VR devs at uh, upcoming UK Hackathon event are going to get an opportunity to win a pair of final version Oculus Touch controllers before they go on sale, which we all speculate is happening probably in November. So very cool. Uh, if you are a dev or you know of someone who's a dev in the UK that might be going to that event, let them know. Uh, it's not just that. They can also win Rifts and I believe Vives are up as prizes as well. But uh, the Oculus Touch, that would be a Pretty damn cool prize for sure. That's it for uh, the news, guys. Oh, there was actually one thing that I wanted to add. Not so much a news, just an informational piece. Uh, Sony, in addition to that, uh, mentioned that they were going to release an, basically like an app, an integration piece. And what it does, very cool. And I wonder how millennials would react to this. It will bring you out of whatever game or experience you are in. You don't have to remove your HMD. It'll bring you to a nice, peaceful, relaxing place, maybe a meadow with flowers, and allow you to, in your VR environment, check your text messages, <laughs> respond to text messages, you know, do general housekeeping on your phone. So very cool, almost like call waiting or putting somebody on hold. You can deal with it without having to go through the cumbersome take off the HMD, da, da 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 put it somewhere safe, go see who's at the door, or answer your phone. Very cool. Little touches like that. It's all about maintaining that VR experience and not making it cumbersome every time you get interrupted with something. So little solutions like that, they don't sound that amazing, but they add up and they will all lead to you know, future feature sets that'll be standard in all of these HMDs in terms of their operating systems, their support software, where like they'll be as regular as chaperone being able to do stuff like that. So very cool that they're innovating in that direction because it is definitely needed. All right, guys, that's it for the news. Cheers as always, and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.